What's going on guys? Welcome back to Life by the Bow. Right now we're on the edge of the reef here down in Key Largo. Trying to see if we can pick off a mutton snapper or whatever wants to bite. But a lot of action going on today so you guys are definitely going to want to stay tuned. Alright guys, well we just made it to the bait spot here. We're putting the chum in the water. As you can see I got my ghetto chum bag here. But hey, better than nothing. But um, basically what we're doing right now, we're chumming up the ballyhoo. Ballyhoo are my bait of choice whenever I'm re-fishing out here in the Keys. Once we get them behind the boat, we're going to pull out the hoop net, do a couple pulls, and hopefully we'll fill up the live well and see what we can get. Alright guys, so we have the ballyhoo really thick behind the boat right now, so we're going to drop the hoop net in start catching them. The reason why we use a hoop net um, is just because with the cast net there's a little bit of technique you have to put into it. For example, like you have to use sand to cloud up the water, um, but the technique with the hoop net is very, very simple. We just drop the hoop net in the water there real soft, very quiet. Like I said, Ballyhoo, they're very spooky baits. And if you notice, the chum is off the opposite side of the boat. The reason why we drop the hoop net off the opposite side of the chum is because the valley who are balled up right here. So since they're balled up on this side of the boat, we drop it here, let it go back. And once we get it back far enough, what we're gonna do is we're gonna switch sides over to the side where the chum is at, and then we're just gonna get right behind them, give it a pull, and then we should have a hoop net full of valley hoop. So right now we're right behind the valley hoop with the hoop net. And we're just gonna start real slow, start pulling, nothing too fast. Because if you jerk and you try to go too fast, what's going to end up happening is they're going to get spooked by the net. You almost got to pretend like it's not even there to start pulling real slow. And then once you see that you have them in the net, then you start to pull fast. Dang, look at that. We got bait, baby. All right guys, so as you can see, we're all rigged up here. We're on the spot. And um, basically what we're gonna be using is a five aught octopus circle hook tied with a loop knot to a 40 pound fluorocarbon leader, um, about 30 feet of fluorocarbon. The reason why we're using fluorocarbon is just because it's a little more durable than mono, also not as visible. The reason why we're using 30 feet is simply because you wanna try to get that weight as far away from the mutton snapper as possible because they're a very spooky fish. They will not eat, and I, I want to repeat this, they will not eat if that weight is anywhere near that hook. As you guys saw, we just caught a bunch of fresh live ballyhoo, and the way that we're going to hook these is right underneath their jaw. Once we go under their jaw, we're going to come out through their top lip, just like that. Toss them in the water, and then we're gonna feed out the leader. And as you can see, where I have the leader connected to the braid, we have this little loop. And I'm gonna show you why we have this loop here. But basically, the way that this is connected is a spider hitch. And the reason why we do the spider hitch is to create a double line reason why we do the double line is because it creates a stronger connection to the uni and it also creates that loop um, so yeah very simple and like I said the reason why we want this loop here is because what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our weight and we're gonna attach it by a snap swivel here 
that snap swivel just goes right on the loop. And then that's what's going to get our bait to the bottom. The reason why we want it on a snap swivel is just because say we get a big fish, right? We can just unclip the weight and we can wind that leader right onto the reel. Remember, we have 30 feet. And since we have 30 feet of leader, once we get to this weight, we'll have to hand line that fish in. But like I mentioned, if it's a big fish, you wanna be able to reel on them. So, right now we're in about 115 feet of water right off of Key Largo on the reef's edge. I've talked about this setup before in one of my dolphin fishing videos, but just to be you know, very brief, very quick, 5,000 pen battle and um, custom Key Largo rod. As far as the weight, you know, you're gonna have to come out here with a plethora of weights because the amount of weight that you use depends on the current. I think we got a pretty even match right here. Obviously, you don't wanna have a weight too big, but you wanna have just enough lead to get you down to the bottom. Hooked up, baby, no telling what it is. Just dropped it down to the bottom. We're drifting here probably about half a mile an hour to a mile an hour. Just got that live ballyhoo down there. Something was hungry. Let's see what it is. It's so one thing I love about bottom fishing. I mean, it can be super relaxed. Once you get your baits and kind of just drop them down here in the bottom, and it can take a little while to get that bite, but you just gotta stay persistent, you know? Put in your time and then eventually you'll drift over some real good bottom, and that was the case here. Here's our weight. Like I was saying before, we're just gonna take that weight, unclip it, remove that from the rig. Thank you, Nick. We're just gonna reel that leader straight up. Oh, dude, that looks like a mutton. Woohoo! We got a mutton there, baby. Got exactly what we were after. Nice. He's looking a little small, but I think he'll make it. So, mutton snapper have to be 18 inches. Right on the money. So you already know where he's going. He's going in the box, baby. Check out how beautiful that fish is. Just the gold, the red, that blue stripe up there on the top, and that little black dot. Looks like we're kind of challenged by some bad weather here, so I think we might push offshore a little bit just to try to get away from it. But let's head out there, see what we can get. Well, welcome to South Florida. We got beautiful blue skies right here. But if you pan over that way, entirely different. So if you guys saw my taking a bay boat offshore video, this is a perfect example. When we left this morning, it looked okay. Conditions looked good. But then this storm started rolling in basically out of nowhere. And that just goes to show how things can change out here real quick. Right, guys we were forced to make a run offshore because of the weather oh they're little tunas so we decided to pull on some pelagics here take a little break from reef fishing right now we got something pretty good we just saw a bunch of tuna busting so that's what it looks like it is be nice if we got a fat black fin for dinner definitely pulling like one as you can see they're busting right there Oh, did you see that? Oh. Got a nice black fin on right now. It's digging. I can't believe I just caught a black fin on a bucktail. I've never done that before. Just sight casting at him. Oh, he's foul hooked. Look at that, dude. That's insane. Foul hooked the black fin. What do you know? Oh, never mind. He was just tail wrap. That's a nice black fin right there. Woo! Check 
that out right there, baby. That's sushi right there. Yeah, I mean, it, it is literally, it's been a tough day today, man. I mean, we've literally been running from the storm all day. But one thing I gotta say, stay persistent, stay positive. As you keep on chopping away, you will catch something out here in the Florida Keys at one point. Look at how cool that fish is, man. So beautiful. Golds, the blacks, the blues. All right, guys, before we put them in the box, we're gonna bleed them. You always wanna do this with a black fin tuna. Um, it's just gonna make the meat taste that much better. So we're gonna stick our finger underneath his gill here, go through to the other side, pull up, and that's gonna hit one of his arteries. He'll bleed out just like that. But throw them in the box. See what else we can catch today. Maybe this storm will kind of veer off and we can do something else, but. All right, guys, you can see there's a whole school of blackfin tuna right there. I'm trolling a rod way back. What I'm just gonna do is I'm just gonna do a little loop right around the school, and hopefully I'm gonna pull this lure straight through them and we can hook up. Got him on the troll this time. Yeah, as you guys can see, there's probably like seven or eight frigates just coming down on this school of blackfin. Already got one, as you guys can see, got the second one on the troll. It's really not that difficult to get them on the troll, but the last one, I was just jigging the bucktail. And that was very surprising that I got a bite because I've never caught a blackfin like that before. Obviously, the traditional troll worked out real well. The key to getting them to bite, though, is just giving this rod a lot of line. Just let it stay really far back behind the boat because blackfin definitely can be a little shy sometimes, so he is not happy sure. once he saw that boat. <laughs> like, nope, not today. But yes, today, baby. Nice. Not as big as the last one. But I'll tell you what, he'll taste just as good. So, as I've been telling everybody in the videos, in the past catching blackfin tuna um, you're only allowed two per person but that's only the case when you get over 10 you're allowed 10 tuna per boat so say for example you have six people on the boat that means you can get 12 seven people on the boat 14 and so on but say for example you know in our case just me and Nick being on the boat we're allowed to keep 10 recording I'm putting that in the video no doubt I'm putting that in the video. Oh, I stopped when I when I fell out <laughs> but you saw him go in the water. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> All right guys, so like I was saying, just little tiny lures like this. This is just a little bucktail jig. This works just as good for dolphin, 50 pound leader. We just toss that back. And I would say give it about 50 yards or so. Just get it way behind the boat. All right, redemption, baby. This one I'm not gonna hold over the side of the boat, I promise. It's funny. I see people out here fishing these schools of tuna sometimes and a lot of the times they mistake a lot of these fish for dolphin and they'll waste a pretty good amount of time just trolling around trying to catch them but the key to catching tuna at least throughout my experience just remember far back behind the boat little lures as you can see that's what's producing right now crazy the amount of fight in this fish, man. They're not happy when they see that boat. And this is the same exact setup that we're mutton fishing with, too. Like I said, I mean, this rod reel combo, you can catch anything down here in the Keys on. 30 pound Suffix 832, Key Largo Custom Rod, 5,000 pen battle. It can handle just about anything. Just pinwheel. What do you think? Should we release this one too? Alright, you're going in the cockpit this time, dude. Do you say we're gonna bleed him just like we did the other one? Two tunas for dinner. I'm glad we let the small one go. Oh,
Dolphin, come on, baby. Come back, come back. Whole school of them. Whole school of dolphin, dude. Got them all. Got one of them. You gotta be so quick when things like this happen, guys. You gotta get that bait on as quick as possible. So we got one in the rod holder here. That's gonna keep the school around. I got a live bait on here. Shouldn't take long before he gets eaten. Dude, whole big school of them. Massive school of them. I got one. There we go, baby. Woo -hoo! I'm gonna put this one in the rod holder. We'll bring this one in. You gotta be ready for these fish, guys. Bring this one in. Hopefully get another one. Ready? We're gonna flip them in. No time for a gap. Trying to get that hook out. Man, that's a nice one right there, baby. Tell you what, they are not eating the artificial baits. We would not be able to catch these fish if we did not have live baits. Got him. Yep. That's a nice one too, man. Woo! So what we're gonna do put this one in the rod holder to keep the school around. Oh man. Pull this one in, get another bait on. He looks a little small, huh? Get a bigger one. I've never seen such lazy mods. There we go. Oh. That valley who came off the hook and one ate it when it was airborne. That's insane. Alright, put that one in the rod holder. This one in. Woo! The whole back of the boat is just filled with mod here right now. It is insane. They're all nice fish too. Look at this. That is like a three pound school here right there. Hooker. Careful, you don't ever want to get a hook in your hand here. That's why these deep hookers are awesome, man. Take that right out. Let's get another bait on. Come on. Look at the frigate right there. There we go. Another one on. Last one coming in. Watch your feet there, kid. Woohoo! Look at the colors on that. I wish the sun was out so you guys could see how beautiful they are lit up in the sun. Dang. Beautiful fish. They did not get any prettier than that. We're eating tonight, boys and girls. Heavy cooler is a full cooler. And a full cooler is always a good thing, baby. Not too bad for a guy on a bay boat and a cameraman. I'd say that's a pretty good day if you ask me. We had to outrun a lot of weather. Look at that, baby. We got it done. We're just going to clean up the mutton here just because I have so many other videos cleaning dolphin and tuna if you guys want to go ahead and check those out. But let's get to work. So that way we can bring them upstairs and Stephanie can cook us dinner because I am so hungry right now. It's been a long day. That right there is probably close to one of the best eating fish in all the Florida Keys right there. 
So make sure when you go to your restaurants, you ask for mutton snapper. But just in case you do come down here, you followed along with this video, I'm gonna show you guys how to clean them. So we're gonna start up here, go around his skull. Make sure to get all that meat out. Come down his backbone. Making sure to get a little bit of bend in your knife. The reason why you wanna get that bend, just to make sure that that runs along his spine real nice, you're not missing any meat. Come out that tail, go under his belly. Some people like to cut around the stomach, I just go through it. And then from where we went on top of the skull right here, we're just gonna follow that around, all the way around that pec fin. As you can see, we've made a cut all the way around the fish. So what we're gonna do is flip them over, do that same exact thing. The reason why is just because I like to leave the meat on the fish makes it easier for me to clean. So let's flip them over, do that all over again, and then we're gonna actually remove the meat off of the fish. Okay, now that we've made that cut on both sides, what we're gonna do is we're gonna run that knife right along his backbone. That's just gonna separate the meat from the bones. Real simple. And the key to filleting fish and filleting it properly is a very sharp knife. I can promise you, if you do not have a sharp knife, you're wasting your time. You're gonna butcher your fish. That is something you want to make sure that you have. As you can see, I mean, that knife is just going right along that meat, like butter, and that's the key. If it's not slicing it like butter, you're gonna end up wasting a lot of time and a lot of meat. As you can see, you can see all those bones. It looks very transparent. That's how you know you got a good filet. Same exact thing on the other side. As you can see, like I said, nice and transparent. That's how you know we got all that meat. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove these ribs. You don't have to worry about this if you cut out the stomach, but I like keeping the stomach meat in there just because I feel like I can get more off the filet. Look at all of those snappers over that carcass. They're eating their cousin. Okay, so now that we removed the stomach bones, there's another tiny little line of bones right in the middle of the filet here. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna run the knife just like that on one side, go through the other. Let's make sure we feel around so we're not cutting more meat than we need to. Boom, bones are gone. So the key to removing the skin is just running your knife flat right along the entire filet. You want to make sure that you're not going too deep because if you go too deep you might cut through the skin but at the same time you don't want to suspend the knife too high because you might end up leaving a lot of meat on that skin. But I think we got a pretty good filet here removed from the skin and yeah that is perfect just like that. Ditch that. Oh, man. Look at those mutton fillets. That is gonna taste good. All right, we'll see you guys up in the kitchen. Well, what do you know? Spent the entire day fishing today, and the whole time, the catch was right here. Aww. He just wants food. When he's That's hungry, right. he's super nice. <laughs> so, so, what do we got on the menu? Tell me what we're making tonight. So, we're tonight. gonna make mahi-mahi. Um, I'm gonna mix the snapper in it because we only caught one. And I'm gonna- Ooh, we. I mean, he, I'm sorry. He only caught one because I wasn't there. Because if we were there, we would have caught so many. So I spent the day working, so I wasn't able to join y'all. 
on the boat, but guess what? I'm here in the kitchen and I'm gonna make it happen. So we're gonna make some mahi-mahi fish with a avocado corn salsa. So stay tuned. All right, so I'm gonna start making the salsa first because the fish cooks like this. So first thing you wanna do is just start chopping your onions. The recipe calls for a red onion. However, I didn't have enough in my fridge. So I'm just gonna use a regular onion, half of a regular onion and a quarter of a red onion. And that way I have my onion. And then you're gonna need a tomato, avocado, and some lime and some cilantro. Sounds good. Oh, and I actually forgot to mention, you need corn too. Alrighty, so now I'm gonna start cooking my fish because we have a lot of fish and it's gonna take some time to cook it all. So all you're gonna do is add some oil to your pan about a tablespoon, right? And I like to make sure it gets all the way around. I have some mutton snapper mixed in here just because we have so much fish and I'm just, I'm dying to eat fish. And they're both really good fish, so. Oh, so that's what you do. You drop them on the floor. But you know what? If it was cooked, we have great vacuum cleaners here. We got Chloe and Riley to clean it up. Nothing a little water won't fix. Those are our um, vacuum cleaners. Those budget, are our Roombas. Those are our budget Roombas. Those are our Roombas. So the fish is done. All I gotta do now is put together this lime butter sauce. And all we're gonna add is honey, garlic, salt, pepper, butter, and lime. And so after you put the sauce on, then the sauce is gonna go with the sauce, or? Nope, it's gonna go on top of the fish with the salsa, so it's gonna add that extra kick that that fish needs. So I am so grateful right now that we are finally about to eat this because I am starved, and I put a lot of work into tonight's dinner, but I know Clay put a lot of work getting those fish. Yeah, and the first thing that you mentioned was grateful, and when I think of the word grateful, I think of how thankful I am to be alive right now because that weather was nasty today and it came literally out of nowhere. But you know what? I mean, it literally forced us to run offshore. And when we ran offshore, we caught the tuna, we caught the dolphin. It was absolutely insane. And what's craziest about it is I literally did it all by myself. Of course, with the help of Nick filming which if it weren't for him, that or this video would not even be possible. So I'm so happy to have him um, helping us. But of course, I'm more than happy to have you helping me eat. So yeah. without further ado, let's get into it. So the first thing here is the tuna, right? Yep. And so we're just eating this raw, mm. which that's what's so great about blackfin. You can eat it raw. Mm. Mm. That's really, really good without a trace of fishiness in it mm -hmm. whatsoever. Mm. But I can't just sit here and stare at this while I eat this, so I gotta try. There you go. The Mahi and Mutton Snapper. All right, now let's see if it tastes as good as it looks. How does it taste? That is so good. Really? That is delicious. As always, we love you guys. Thanks so much for watching. Of course, check out Avail Gear. Gonna have to get yourself some merch. A lot of stuff dropping here in the near future, but you guys make all of this possible. We appreciate you guys watching so much. We'll see you next time. Bye.